The Megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. Over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record, the females have also been found to be twice the size of the males. The Megalodon could swallow a small car without even touching its teeth, if cars had been around then. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no natural predators. It was the uncrowned king of the seas, swimming freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world from America to Europe and Australia and Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the Megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago. But could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? The fearsome name, Megalodon, comes from two Greek words. Megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lived up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, so who knows what's lurking at the bottom. If you did manage to make it down, it's unlikely that you'll run into Meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely that they're still around, but not impossible. Now, about the appearance of the Megalodon. Scientists believe it didn't look like a great white shark. The Megalodon belongs to a different fish family and most likely looked like a giant sand tiger shark. Flattened snout, small eyes, its dorsal fin moved backward. The sand shark has two dorsal fins about the same size. The coloration is light brown with a white belly. It may have had brown red spots like a sand shark all over its body. We used to think of the Megalodon as something scary from the first finds of its fossils. That was back in the Renaissance era. People found some teeth in the rocks. At first, these teeth were thought to be the tongues of dragons or snakes. And here is the first drawing of what the owner of these teeth supposedly looked like. A massive snout with a scary nose and a bunch of razor-sharp teeth. The Megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the Meg. But they weren't the best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. We also have evidence that megalodons were brutal hunters, kings of the food chain. The first combat tool in their arsenal was the battering ram. The megalodon would take its prey by surprise. It had only one chance to hit it. If it missed, it would take too long for a second round. The maneuverability of the megalodon was comparable to a large truck. While a great white was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the Meg. But its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too. But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? 
Due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continually raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of the shark skeleton, which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought that the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the Megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago, but the Megalodons came much later. The oldest Meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the Megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last around, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. The Kraken is a colossal squid, a legendary sea monster, the biggest hunk of calamari you ever saw. And if this monster had existed, the world would have changed beyond recognition. The Kraken has powerful tentacles, solid muscles with suckers at the end. They're impossible to escape. The Kraken can break a ship in half, or just pull it down into the depths. But the worst thing about the Kraken is its size. According to old sailors' stories, its size is almost 10 soccer fields. Hey, maybe the Kraken could play soccer! The Kraken legends said the monster was so giant that sailors mistook it for a small island. In past centuries, it would have been impossible to defeat such a beast. If the Kraken existed in reality, it might have had offspring. Yeah, in all the world's oceans, there would be giant monsters that could sink any ship. It's unlikely that the Kraken would have competitors in its habitat, so its population would grow strongly. Since the Kraken is enormous, it would need a lot of food, so the population of other large sea animals would fall significantly. Blue whales, great white sharks, other giant squids, all the big sea creatures would be endangered. The Kraken belongs to the cephalopod genus. This species includes squid and octopus, some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. The Kraken is a skilled hunter and will never fight in the open. Colossal squids live in deep waters and they have the largest eyes among all animals. The squid's eye is the size of a dinner plate. Thanks to this, they can see their prey from far away. Similarly, a Kraken would spot the ship much sooner than sonar could pick up the Kraken. It would always have the drop on you. Well, that's not good. In 1857, a squid beak was discovered on the coast of Denmark. Other huge squid remains were found in the Bahamas, and then scientists were convinced that gigantic squids existed. While colossal squid have been officially discovered since then, it's been more than a hundred years and we still don't know what the max size they can grow to. The fact is, colossal squids are one of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They live in the depths of the ocean where it's challenging for scientists to reach. Any dive to a greater depth requires powerful, bulky equipment. Underwater bathyscaphs and cameras make a lot of noise and light, which squids notice from afar. They flee before we can see them. It's difficult to say if these huge squids were the size of a small island, but the truth is, we've only studied about 5% of the ocean. It may be that in its depths, monsters much more terrible than the Kraken swim. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.